straight away go into the discussion and then we'll be waiting for your questions via SMS or via Zoom, Facebook and any avenue that you can get your questions through. We will be glad and we will read them out. But but my very first question, I mean, if you're done, but my very first question is that we cannot really invest a lot into businesses if we currently see that the health of our own economy is not in a good state. I remember in January you had granted an interview and stated that we should be looking at a deficit of about 8%. Well, Fitch says it's going to end, um, 2021 is going to end at 8.3%. And also the fact that we should spend in the productive side. But currently, our debt to GDP, GDP is projected at 81%. It just doesn't look good when you're talking about the general economy. How do we invest in an economy like this? I think that uh, most of us uh, get it wrong. The situation we are in now, this COVID situation, the first priority is to keep human beings alive. If you have to spend to keep them alive, what you should be doing is keeping people alive by making sure that the economy is, does not slip too far away. So you start investing in areas that are uh, going to increase productivity, keep people healthy, but watching what areas, I mean, it's a, a crisis makes people think, what have we been doing wrong? What have we been giving away freely? Uh, for example, uh, some of the monies we gave away for electricity, for water, I think it was misdirected. That was the opportunity to go into the countryside, dig a lot of boreholes, make sure that people's waters were safe because Basically, it's washing your hands that is important. Yeah. Most of the outpatients you go to, it's diarrhea and uh, uh, food-related uh, unhygienic habits that take people there. So to have water to wash your hands is critical. And taking, uh, giving water away in the urban areas when the bulk of our people are in the rural areas doesn't help. Electricity. We are not even paying for it to uh, the, the producers. We owe them a lot of money. So that's not a thing to give away. So you see, what can I give away that will help all of us? And to me, if our debt to GDP were to be 90%, and some of it is going to create productive assets that will lead to investment, that would be fantastic. A lot of our young people are now in FinTech they are coming up with apps. If the government would take some of these apps and use them themselves, it would be fantastic. I think Bryce Simmons came up a long time ago with this yeah. idea of... And pedigree. Every, yeah, put it on. If the Ghana government has supported them aggressively, can you imagine the whole world, everybody using that app, it will probably be bringing into Ghana more than gold and cocoa are bringing us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's... Uh, identifying the areas that you need to focus in to keep well and move. You know, so this idea of being uh, tied to their GDP ratio and so forth, it is important. It shows that things uh, need to be watched, but watch them uh, properly. I think the, the document that the Ghana government brought out, uh, Ghana Cares, you know, fantastic program, you know, and I was saying the money that we needed to uh, raise locally. I was talking about, about 30 billion. Uh, fiscal investment. Mm. If every district, if our districts were empowered, you know, and I always feel sad when I uh, see that, you know, uh, the president wanted us to do empower the local uh, district assemblies, make them elected, make them powerful, and we rejected it. If they were powerful there, and they were saying, everybody in my district, Give me two days 
two Mondays of work. Those of us who cannot go and dig uh, the gutters or the roads, we pay how much uh, a day? 100, 200 cities were to do that. You know, be raising maybe a billion, two billion for uh, fiscal investment, for cleaning our environment. Uh, so focus on what is important. Leave the financial size to the experts and let's hope and pray that they are doing what is right. One of the critical areas of, of investment is also uh, the MM, MSME sector because they actually um, form almost 80% of you know, the whole economy. But the critical thing that they really lack is access to finance. And in these COVID times, the expectation was that they will have all the concentration. Well, the cap bars was introduced and some of them got these capital injections. There were other things that government also did as the phase one of, of the Ghana Cares program. W would you say that this has set the tone for us to start um, investing and of course that we have some level of stability now to really look forward? Yeah, I think so. Look, uh, for the uh, small uh, micro area space. I think it's probably unrealistic uh, to see that you can get money from the bank or from governments. You know, in the olden days, if I go back to uh, my mother's generation, there are about five, seven women uh, together. They all agree at the end of the month, everybody will put in one pound or maybe 10 cities into the pot, and one of them takes it. That's your capital. And every month, a port is given to one of them. You know, self-help. That's how the city was born. But now since you become a takeaway to go and invest it, and it goes into treasury bills, it should be collected and shared among the people who are putting it in as their, as their capital. And one of the things that a government can do if we get to the local level is that schools, the furniture, the doors, the local carpenters, instead of buying them up from Accra to supply my village, the local carpenter is giving uh, the work to do. The local masons are the ones who are giving the contract, not a contract given in Accra, but when you go to the local level and you're empowering people, that's how you do it. So they get work there. And the young people, when they are getting work where they were born and live, then they work and live there. Instead of coming to Accra, Kumasi, Tamale, Sekindik, Takrade, to overburden the limited, already extended social infrastructure uh, that we have. So going a little bit back, and uh, government purchasing power. Government does a lot of purchasing. If we were to use that purchasing at the local level to buy from the farmers who are producing, instead of coming to a crowd to buy to shift it back, you know, I think a little bit of innovation, ingenuity will help these people, all they need is somebody to buy something from them at a local level to put a little money into their pockets for them uh, to be able uh, to survive. During your delivery, you, you spoke about your association with UBA uh, um, as a bank. And um, it, it brought my mind to we as a country setting different banks up, um, special purpose banks. So an agric bank, we currently have a development bank, which is expected to be part of the Ghana Cares program to give funding, especially to MSMEs and for development. Is this necessary? Is this a path to go to really solve um, some of the problems which are in the space? You know, the... Uh Setting up a development bank that knows so bad. We've been there before. Agri Development Bank was a specialized bank, NIB for industry. But we found out that when you have a development bank, because they didn't have a commercial banking wing, you give a loan to me, I have a Ghana Commercial Bank as my bank. That's where my cash flow is flowing. So the development banks were not keeping an eye to get their money paid back. That's why Dr. Paul Akwa, when he came, came up with these universal banks. So it can be both 
a, a bank, commercial bank, but you can focus your investment on agriculture, or you can focus on, on manufacturing or mining. Uh, so that's that. So the development bank that we are setting up is going to give their money to the banks, their, their wholesale, to Ghana Commercial Bank, Agri Development Bank, yeah. this bank. If these banks do not find a way, you know, a way, the mechanism, the tra transmission mechanism of getting monies to their customers and being able to collect the money from their customers, then we are in trouble. And this is why, you know, a bank, uh, people think owning a bank is going to make money. No. A bank will make money if they have competent people operating and they are, they are moral integrity. They are not going to give a loan to themselves or to their relatives and then say, let's write it off. So you need people, that's why I said I know, a, a banking, financial service, it's a sacred trust. And you are there knowing that every city that is there, somebody sweat. When you look at it that way, that the Makole woman, this is a sweat that you are taking care of. Then the transmission mechanism from the big man's retail, you give it to the commercial banks, Ghana Commercial, NIB, are they restructured enough to be able to give loans and get them back? And it means somebody comes for a loan. You don't wait one year, two years before you are processing it. They would have forgotten what they uh, even needed the, the loan for. So, and also being able to monitor, having friendly relations uh, with your customers. I remember uh, UBA, uh, when we had non-performing loans, of about uh, 12, 13 percent. We sat on there, what is wrong? Then the bankers were told, be close to your, uh, the people loan money to. Find out what is their problem. Sometimes the problem can be solved with more cash. Maybe they need management, maybe they need better raw materials, but you talk to them and say, what is going wrong? But when people have a problem, they are scared to talk to their banks. But be close to them, and we quickly reduce non-performing loans to about uh, less than 1%. So the relationship with your customers, the transmission mechanism is important. How do you monitor the transmission mechanism of the loan to the end destination and how it comes back? The financial sector cleanup cost yeah. us about more than $19 billion to, to deal with. There's general apathy when it comes to investing now because people are simply not sure where they are going to invest their monies and whether their investments are safe. How do we bring the confidence back? It will take some time uh, to bring confidence back. You know. uh, I remember as a young economist, we we're trying to get people to save, put their monies in the banks. And uh, I remember an incident at Ghana Commercial Bank, where this farmer had come, he had his money wrapped up in paper, gave it to the girl at the teller uh, machine. The girl counted it, you know, put the thing and put the money on the side, okay? And then, of course, somebody was taking the money to go and put it in the till so that they can do this. The man said, hey, Mr. I don't know. Uh, that's my money. The guy said, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Then they said, they are still taking it. I said, hey, he just reached into, I haven't gone, you are sharing my, just reached into that, he took his money, wrapped it up, and left. left. You know, so confidence, it takes a long time to build, uh, and we should never lose it. I think that uh, the regulators, uh, Bank of Ghana, sort of took their eye off the ball. Uh, the inspection should have shown that some of the banks even banking supervision banks, you have done, some of those banks should not even have been given a banking license. license. You know, banking is a, a field where only people of a certain, you, don't, you are not given a banking license because you have money. You are given a banking license because you are a person of a certain standing. And that's the only issue where you can't take the governor of the central bank to court. If he says, I'm not giving you a, a banking license because I don't think you are a person to be trusted with other people's uh, money. We can't take him to court. It's a personal decision. And I think we took her out of the board. People came in, 
just to mobilize monies to finance themselves and their entities. They were no different uh, from somebody who put a mask on their head to go and rob the tail. Uh, so regulation means going in, finding out earlier that things are going wrong, and then correcting it. You know, just withdrawing licenses is not the first uh, step. It should be the very last, and people should have been given warning. That's why I was proposing that when they do the on-site inspection, and there are issues of going concern, that there are issues of the banks not or institution not being able to make payment. The financial services were old people from the university put their monies and they say they are not getting the money back. These people's earnings, they are not people who have stolen monies. So immediately, this money should have been paid back. I have no problem with the government paying it back. But I think that as we did the first time around, you know, that their assets should have been taken, put into a bank, uh, clean up uh, asset trust, so that as the assets are sold, then the government is repaid for the money uh, they spent. But because we didn't link the assets of these banks to the fact that the government is paying for them, people can still go around and say that it's for political reasons that their banks are being uh, destroyed. You know? But I think that going forward, current ongoing inspection and then the regulators being on the ball and keeping their eyes on the wall. But it's obvious that the regulators do not have the huge numbers. Um, SEC and, of course, the Bank of Ghana may not necessarily have all the staff um, to be able to do excellent work. For example, in the um, Securities um, and Exchange Commission, for example, um, for about five years, may have visited an institution once or twice. Is that enough to raise the red flag before anything happens? I think with the ICT revolution apps, you can do a lot. Uh, but the, the, these institutions provide financial statements which can be looked at uh, very carefully. When there are stresses, it's, uh, the stresses become uh, uh, very obvious. It's Bank of Ghana on-site inspection. But even that is risk-based, you know, so that the banks that are doing well, you don't visit them physically uh, too often. It's the ones that are marginal that you pay uh, more attention to. But I think that look at the money that we spend on the cleanup. Uh, there are a lot of accountants uh, who are going unemployed. Wouldn't it have been better to have spent the money employing them if shortage of staff was a problem than waiting to get into the ditch before we pull the, the truck out of the gutter. Mm. Less than 15% of all bank loans actually go into long-term investments um, for different businesses. What should we be looking at as a country and of course as different businesses in providing long-term funding um, because most startups, most um, MSMEs actually um, need more than a year to actually turn monies around to make profits. You see the commercial banks, that is the difference between commercial banks and development banks. Commercial banks, what is there? Is your current account and my current account, okay? So commercial banks have short term they cannot lend long. I'm very passionate about the insurance companies. Insurance is where your long-term uh, funds are. And in Ghana, what we've been doing is that we have not paid attention to developing indigenous uh, savings institutions. And also, we are not uh, implementing our savings, our uh, insurance rules. If you start a building, you are supposed to insure it. All these big churches that people are going to, they are supposed to be insured in case somebody falls. Houses are supposed to be insured. And uh, if we're insuring all this, you are putting in a lot of money. And it should not be going to outsiders. You know, If your insurance is being provided largely by external companies, 
That's your saving, your long term savings going to South Africa or going to Europe. So we should encourage indigenous uh, insurance companies who should also be encouraged to be able to uh, reinsure, reinsurance some of the uh, big things. If you are doing a big structure and then something goes wrong and insurance about two million, three million has to be paid, it will be difficult for some of our indigenous uh, insurance companies to be able to do that. That's why we need to get them to move together. And that's why I've been encouraging uh, the teachers fund to get involved, to be able to mop up a lot of these indigenous insurance companies, to make them big, so that the long-term savings, which is in insurance, can stay. You know, for developed countries, about 6% of GDP is insurance. insurance. And pension sector. If Ghana we have 6% of GDP, of 6 billion, that's 3.6 billion cities for investment. Can you imagine that? Uh, so we should focus on our financial institutions, how to indigenize them, domesticate them, and then let's help them to build up. Let's make sure that all government building, government vehicles are, invest, are insured, pay the money to the insurance companies so that we grow the long-term savings. When the long-term savings are there, they will look short for long-term funding. Uh, for our company, but we should not continue to think that short-term banks with short-term funds can invest long-term. It is not realistic. Mm. Yeah, this is a related question from Richard um, Pouza. Um, he says, as many African countries are facing issues with stability um, and or confidence, please, what investment opportunities can young investors and entrepreneurs drive from the continental free trade area? I think that a good thing is uh, investing externally. If they can get into anything that is export related, even if you are farming avocados that you want to sell, anything that you sell, because when the, economy, the city is unstable, for the uh, importers, as we import in, you need more CDs. You are losing money. For the exporter, they go to get their $10. This, today, they are getting uh, 57 CDs. Yes. Tomorrow, when they get their $10, they are getting 60 CDs. So the, the uh, exporters are, are laughing all the way home. And that's what you want. You want to hit the importers. Those of us who are addicted to imported items, hit us. Those who are waiting, Jerome shares and made in Ghana things, they will be laughing. And that's the way that you also use the financial to tweak the incentive system. Mm. So a lot of young people will go into ICT apps that will help them to sell things outside, look outside Ghana. The, the fashion, if you take a look at, uh, say, go jewelry, tourism. I mean, the black Americans are making a lot of money you know, the rappers. I may not appreciate rap, but they put on the gold. So let's make the gold nuggets in our traditional thin symbols, the big one. Mm -hmm. They put around their necks, they are wrapping. And then our young people are, are also doing... They are selling Ghana too. They are selling jewelry, Ghana suit, and so forth. Our kente cloth. Why do we leave it to the Koreans to print it synthetic and be making handbags? We ourselves should be doing uh, some of those things. So there are a whole lot of things that the young people, through adversity, through necessity, should focus on and move. You know, uh, sports. Sports training used to be very important in Ghana. Training footballers, tennis, become very important. There are a lot of uh, good tennis players, who, but you have to start young and train them. Now, if somebody's playing and world building, they are making money. So sports is also an area that we should be uh, looking into is an export of uh, talent. So the young people, they are ICT survey, uh, music plays, they can put it on, our culture. People are sitting in America yearning for connection with Africa. Yeah. Let's give them the opportunity. In recent times, I, I conducted an interview relating to the Ghana alternative market uh, the fact that is not really yielding the needed um, expectation and the drive with which the Ghana Stock Exchange uh, came up with the concept. 
Now, one of the key things I gathered from the people I was interviewing was the fact that it, it had low education. I mean, basically, people didn't really understand um, what was going on there. And the MSMEs also didn't have the right books and information to benefit from that. From where you sit, what advice can you give, one, to the stock exchange, and two, to businesses that will want to list on the alternative market? I think that for uh, the stock exchange, uh, for example, uh, the listed companies, some of the investments, for example, the uh, companies like Tessa, educating uh, their uh, people who are investing with them, you tell them, look, when you invest in uh, the main exchange, one of the things you get is that you get your dividends, you also get appreciation of capital. Okay, So those ones, if you are young, just say that every month I'm going to put aside maybe five CDs, uh, ten CDs, and throw it away in some of these uh, companies. You get advice. I mean, Tesla will be doing research on which of the new things on the stock exchange will work. Uh, on the alternative uh, exchange, I think uh, one of the companies I'm involved with, Bayport, was one of the few that raised. We raised about maybe 400 million, 200 million uh, for working capital. It's, you have to put together data. Uh, every month or a couple of months, you do meet the investors and you have to go with your data sheet and explain what is going on. You know, putting together data is difficult for the small uh, ones. But this is why I'm hoping that uh, the Ghana Stock Exchange or the Alternative Exchange should be able to put together an incubator for uh, getting some of these small firms, educating them, being there. Let's have four or five accountants to be working there to prepare, help them prepare uh, the books uh, to be able to go there. So it's an overall education of an investor, and especially, as I said, becoming more and more complicated. So you decide how much money are you going to put on the uh, stock exchange? How much are you going to put on government bonds, treasury bills, maybe the ones you want to eat from, put on T bills, the interest you put onto your current account, and then you can be spending it uh, for your chop money. But ideally, don't be interested. If anybody comes to you and say, I will give you 50%, 30% interest, it's a dream. Yeah. It doesn't work. That's what has led a lot of people astray. Mm -hmm. But if somebody is giving you 18%, 20%, like the government uh, bonds and treasury bills, and it's going to last, that's good. Make sure that whatever they are telling you to invest in is any more than the rate of inflation which sometimes be 12 percent, 15 percent, than the depreciation in the city. So you are keeping your head above water. <laughs> uh, you don't drown. Yes. But they need a lot of uh, investment dialogue mm -hmm. or what I call financial education dialogue, mm -hmm. which I think Bank of Ghana and the others can help educate the public. And especially uh, what I'm more about are the young women who are going into business. They go out of necessity. It's the only way they can make money. And they said that MasterCard uh, Women in Business Entrepreneurship said that in Ghana, I think Rwanda and uh, Kenya, these are the candidates, whole world, yes. we are leading on women as new entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs yeah. And they are going out of necessity. So let's give them a little support by training them in financial literacy so that they can read their balance sheet. And it's not only that, the top two people who are working as directors for banks for the government should the first initiation send them through basic balance sheet and financial statement readings. Yeah. Well, this one doesn't have a name attached to it, but it says, how can entrepreneurs attract and get access to angel investors and or venture capitalists? <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> when young people come to make a pitch as uh, angel investors, you know, uh, you know whether they thought about it carefully or they haven't thought about it uh, carefully. Uh, let me start at a very basic 
uh, bottom. Uh, an elderly woman, you know, very respectable woman. And uh, she was always hanging around the MPP office there, you know, doing this. And so I asked, so what do you do? Uh -huh. So oh, her business is poor. What was your business? Selling food on the street. I said, ah, so how can you put back your business? Say, sit down with somebody to write for you. You know, the big pot where you cook, the print you use to serve, the inputs and so forth. It made sense. You know, I read it. It made a lot of sense. I said, okay, here's the money, go and do it. For almost nine months, I didn't see her around the party office anymore. And about uh, two years later, I'm going, I, she saw me, she started running away. I said, why are you running away? She spent the money. They said, the, the money goes poor, you know, she, because she didn't have basic uh, financial education, literacy. When the money was coming in, she was spending it. Yeah. And before you know, you haven't even eaten just the uh, profits. Yeah. You are eating into uh, your capital. So for them, what I'll say that, know what you are talking about. When you come to me and I say, okay, how would you value your business? Because I, I always operated on the Abusan system. I say, I'm putting money into it, but it's a busan. You have uh, the idea, mm -hmm. you are going to run it, and the busan system is from the cocoa farms. Yeah. You bring uh, a laborer to work on it, he harvests, he shares it, uh, he takes one third and gives you two thirds. So I say, okay, this time, you take two thirds of the profit and bring me one third. One. But you have to be able to say, I worked on this project for two years. If I took my salary and my associates together, it's about uh, maybe uh, 5,000 Ghana cities. So if you are giving me 2,000 or say 3,000, that's three eighths of the business. So that's what I'm giving to you, mm -hmm. or just the Abusan. So be able to answer questions. What are the risks that you are facing? Who's your market? How are you able to sell it? and be able to retain the money. And for goodness sake, put your sales in the bank. Put it there in the evening when you close, go and collect it. Don't put it in the market. In case there is fire, you fire. lose it. Don't put it under your bed. It will be stolen. If you're a woman and you take it home, you are the one your husband will be looking at to spend on chop money. You won't give any more chop money. Uh, so it's important that in attracting somebody to put in some money, they are putting a team because somebody helped them. They also want to help you. But be sure that you talk about the business you are going into as something you know, you've been there, it can work. Y yesterday I spoke with the um, Kigali Vice Chancellor, Kigali University Vice Chancellor, and he spoke about the, the fact that we need to do some serious segmentation of the whole African economy to really benefit from the continental free trade. I, I found that interesting, um, the fact that so that we do not have some level of um, competition, unnecessary competition that will result in um, businesses just fading away because others are giving cheaper prices than that. Now that we are encouraging everybody to go into after, especially small-scale businesses, what, sh what should be the posture of Ghana, one, when it comes to education in relation to investments, financial capacity of the, uh, the populace, of businesses, and also what should be our posturing in really taking advantage of after? I think that Ghana, uh, we should take advantage that we are going to dominate the whole system. Uh, financial services, uh, I think we should be there. Uh, ICT, I think we should be there. I think it is uh, unfortunate that maybe there isn't uh, uh, somebody somewhere taking a look and say, where can we position ourselves? You know, I think you know, I, I understand that, for example, the uh, uh, 
Facebook or uh, wanted to be able to put their service here, they had a, a joint venture with somebody. Uh, they applied for a license and they weren't given the license, you know. I think this short-sighted, you know, it shows that we don't understand that having the service of one of these big giants, I mean, when Twitter opened an office here, we're jubilating. We don't understand the importance of Ghana because of our high literacy rate. If one of these big people put their thing here, it's fantastic. Look, Ireland was getting a whole lot. Maybe uh, when the Irish uh, struggle starts anew, uh, Ghana, we are known for the peace that we enjoy. Yeah. Uh, you go to Nigeria, you know, Boko Haram, you go to Burkina and all that. So West Africa, uh, we are the o oasis of peace and we should not take it for granted. People want to invest in Nigeria. They are scared they will come here uh, whilst they are putting their food small, small in Nigeria to test the waters. So we should take advantage of it and put in the hubs. If we have a cargo hub, in Ghana that people want to do. You have a cargo hub in Ghana. Uh, the Chinese now have an aircraft manufacturing company that is competing with Boeing and Airbus. If we can get them here to train their pilots here, to do their maintenance here, because they want one in West Africa, they want one in East Africa. We may go to uh, Rwanda or uh, Nairobi. You know, the hubs are Johannesburg, uh, Nairobi, Casablanca, uh, Addis Ababa. Ghana needs to become a hub. You know, where we are located, almost here, when we get the uh, big cargo planes landing here for just in time uh, pass for the industries and so forth. Then from here, the national airlines, regional airlines can take it to Nigeria, uh, to Addis Ababa, to East Africa and so forth. So our focus should be, how do we become a hub? You take the oil industry, uh, is located in Takrade. If we have a hub there, from all the way from Angola, coming through here to Mauritius, uh, to uh, Mauritania, where the new gas fields are, we become the center, repairing the vessels. It's better to have uh, one of these uh, oil uh, car cargo planes, you know, platforms being serviced in Ghana than having to go all the way uh, to uh, uh, Gibraltar uh, to be serviced. But you know, we're trying to get the boat yard in Tema to be given to somebody to run. We still haven't been able to do so. It's a matter of focusing. Rwanda, of course, they are very focused. You see, if you have the government planning, it can be excellent, but if there's a disaster, it's also your whole eggs. So I prefer that we live to the it to the individuals. We want cars to be manufactured here. How are we going to make sure that the inputs, some inputs are being made here, the tires are being made here, maybe the engine blocks are being made of aluminum, maybe the upholstery inside the cars are being done here. You know, so these are the type of things we have to do to distinguish ourselves, to brand ourselves slightly different uh, from the others. So that those who want to export to the continental African free trade area. We we'll use here at the base, WHO, make sure that all your pandemic fighting medications warehouse here, they pay us rent, and from here, we take it to uh, the other uh, places. Mm -hmm. So segmentation, you know, uh, command control uh, is good in fighting epidemics, but it can also lead to uh, disaster, you know. <laughs> so let's compete. Okay. You know, uh, what we call competition. Yeah. Let's cooperate as African country, ECOWAS, to build the market, but, you know, kill one another like hell to get market share. Great. So this is from Ibn Arthur, who says, thanks for the continued sharing of knowledge. Um, he says he met you in 2006 and you mentored him briefly. Today, um, he has helped set up a business incubator and investment fund thanks to the advice and confidence reposed. Um, I would like to know your thoughts on how HNWI in Ghana can be supported to effectively make angel investment and also um, participate in local venture capital funds. I think that's the name of his company. company. Mm. Uh, angel investment. 
uh, the experience uh, with angel investment. I think the pioneers uh, were Frank Adu, formerly of uh, Carl Bank. Carl Bank, you know, uh, he got me involved and we put money together. Uh, there was a young lady, Miss Brown, uh, who was uh, coordinating, you know. Uh, people came in, they wanted to take uh, oil uh, from, uh, what is this plant that grows here in Ghana? Uh, it has beans and you extract it. Uh, was an MIT graduate who wanted to do that. Uh, no, there are a whole lot of things uh, that can be done. But I think that what we need, you know, the government set up um, an entity uh, that was giving loans, uh, grants, uh, to investors who are trying, you know, I, I tried to get one for somebody uh, who was using drones uh, for, in, for spraying and so forth. So those are the type of, I think the guy who was running it uh, now is the, uh, is the deputy minister at finance now. Oh. Uh, he was running it, he's now the deputy minister, so I hope that by his elevation, uh, into Minister of Finance, you make sure that this fund uh, is uh, given resources to be able to support uh, people like that. But I think we have to take a good look at some of these operators in the fintech area, uh, give them support financially, and what is even more important, give them government contracts for them to grow, because that is what will grow, and then they will get contact, contracts in other African countries and that's how we expand our muscle, just like South Africa and Nigeria have been expanding their financial services into other African uh, countries. This is the way you get hold of some of the dividends and the savings of other countries to support your own economy. I think what he actually meant was high net worth investors. Um, he would like to know your thoughts on how high net worth investors in Ghana can be supported to effectively make angel investment and also participate in local venture capital funds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. high net worth people are people who have some resources yes. uh, to spare. Yes. Yeah, it's a matter of uh, uh, putting them together. As I said, you know, Frank Edu put some of us together and we all put in money. And then uh, we used to go and listen to them how they are doing. But you need a forum. You know, uh, Mr. Kuma, uh, who is now a deputy minister in the Ministry of Finance, I used to run this special fund that I'm talking about. The name just uh, slipped me. But I think that if we put more resources there to help them come up, brush up the ideas, tidy them up, to be able to talk to high net investors, but it's a matter of just calling a few people together for a working breakfast, a Zoom call, what, are, what is happening, especially in the FinTech and ICT space, what is happening? somebody going into uh, agriculture for exports, for example, uh, who needs a little bit money. Get a few people together and let's put in 100,000 here, 200,000 here. Uh, if 10, 20 people put it in, that's fine. If you are able to put it now on the web, there are also Ghanaian, uh, the Ghanaian diaspora. Each one of them may be able to put aside $1,000 uh, a year and some of them when they invest their company will also invest alongside with them and if we can get a uh, hundred thousand Ghanaians in the diaspora uh, to put together a uh, thousand uh, dollars that's uh, almost like uh, the Marshall Plan for Ghana <laughs> that's the way that's to go true. so you should put together a group that will invite people into a zoom space into a working breakfast space to say these are the brilliant ideas we have, but we are short of money. How much money can you put in? And that's 100,000, 100,000, 200,000 here. These high net worth people can be able to put it in, remembering that somebody held me when I was young, and they also want to help you. Finally, in the next minute, share with us the Ghana you would like to see the environment with which people can invest freely and people's businesses can get the opportunities. How 
will the Ghana that you would like to see at almost 82 or 83, what are your expectations in terms of how you want it to play out? A peaceful Ghana. Already peaceful. A Ghana continuing to be peaceful. We have the fire all around us. We have to make sure that it's peaceful. It means we have to learn to talk to one another, not at one another. We need to be able to, uh, you know, to debate, to discuss vigorously, robustly, but in a civil manner uh, to one another. And then reasonable microeconomic stability so that people's investment and savings are kept safe and well to do. And men and women of competence and integrity. In our political space, more people working for Ghana, working for the community. And above all, a Ghana where the foundation, the local, the bottom is organized. We cannot continue with a Ghana where only the top is organized. I'm looking for a strong local government, district chief elected, so that when my gutter is not clean, I won't vote for them again. That's right. If we have that Ghana, the press that will be reading, it's not a concerns about Accra and national politics. It will be at the local level in my village. The water is not clean. Why is the water not clean? Somebody is giving, doing galamsey. Who gave them permission to do galamsey? Stop your galamsey. You have the people, their concerns become uppermost. Water, drinking water, education, primary health, not even big hospitals, but primary health to fight malaria, mosquitoes, and all that. This is the Ghana we need, the Ghana where we all pull together as Ghanaians. A Ghana where it doesn't matter. Uh, somebody uh, called me yesterday and said, oh, I see you are helping a whole lot of people get on uh, some of these companies, but you haven't talked to me. Is it because I'm Ghana? I said, yes, because you are not from Usu Ashanti. You know, we should forget about our tribal differences. Get people of competence. When we are going to war, you don't care whether you are Ghana or Ashanti. I care whether you are competent enough to go with me so that we finish the war and I'm safe and alive to come back. So we should get Ghana to pull together. And the way we pull together is by talking to one another so that we understand. And in the public space, in the radio space, please let people talk if they want to talk. Peer review is what is needed so that we move in the right direction. Research in the financial service sector. Let the research come up, let it be aired, and let's move away from the issues of a uh, uh, man by dog, you know. Uh, let's talk about, move away from the ugly noises of politics, as uh, J.B. Darucha said, and concentrate on the things that matter, bread and butter, Issues. For the average man, not bread and butter, as in kinky and uh, fish for the average <laughs> uh, person. So that our uh, people are kinky fresh and fufu fresh, yes. no potato fresh. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would like to quickly end with this. This is from Eric NGAJ, who says, Mr. Pianim is a profound speaker, and I stopped everything to listen to his wisdom. How can government tap into such wisdom without being unnecessarily political? Could NDPC be a super ministry, as in the case of China's NDRC, channeling all these good ideas to fruition? Would you like to say anything? <laughs> I would say that, you know, uh, I think we set up the National Development Planning Commission. Uh, there was a special council, a fiscal council that uh, the president uh, set up. I think these institutions should be used and they should not be shy about uh, coming up uh, with ideas. The problem in Ghana, I talk to people, please talk. Hey, they will kill me. And you see, they are, as Rowling said, 
young people with sharp teeth. Yes. And there the are lots of people. Sharp teeth. You know, there are lots of people who don't want to be mauled in the public arena. But some of us who are trained in uh, politics, we believe that you forego your privacy and allow yourself to be insulted small for the good of the community. Thank you very much. On that note, thank you, Mr. Pinim, for sharing your thoughts. Um, I hope we get more of these, even though we had a discussion uh, relating to conversations like these um, beyond today. My name is Odile Ntiamwa, Head Business Programming, the Multimedia Group, and thanks so much for this innovative conversation that Tessa Capital has been putting together. This is the second and this particular one was on investing in Ghana, Mr. Pianim's journey and lessons. Thank you for your contributions and everything that you have done. Would like to take a... Okay, yeah. So thank you so much. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful that another dialogue will come up with such insightful um, conversations that will benefit the whole country. Have a good day.